Good morning. Good morning. You may be seated. Give an honor to God and to Father Ben, to my pastor, Reverend Zimmerman, and friend in Christ, Brother Randolph, Reverend Randolph, and to all of you who are gathered here today, all the deacons and wardens, and all you lovely people who came out to be tortured this morning. <laughs> I ask you to pray with me as we go through this process. I won't be before you long. I need about 21 minutes and 93 seconds, and we should be good. So. Uh, it is an honor to be allowed to do this in my father's stead, my father in the ministry, Reverend Zimmerman. Uh, so I will try to be brief. I'll give a sermon. As you heard the scriptures today, I won't read those again, but I do encourage you, as always, to please read Psalm, the 23rd Psalm, John 14, and Romans 10. It's part of your Bible study this week. Include those in your study. Every week we see football stadiums fill up with people ready to cheer on their favorite team. True fans show up for the game. They got their jersey, they've purchased some tickets, and they paid to park and maybe even purchased a few items going into the stadium. They spend all that time and money not even knowing if their team's going to win that day, but they're true fans. The one thing they do know is they love football and that they're going to receive some joy from being at the game, being there in the stadium where other people can't be. They're just glad to be in a place that everybody can't go. Remember that as we go on. So why aren't we like that about church? Our favorite team is here, right? We give less money than it would cost to take a family to a football game on Sundays. No, no matter what life throws at us, we love Jesus. And even though we might suffer some losses along the way, when the final horn sounds, we know where we're going to be. We know we have the victory. And if Jesus is our everything, Shouldn't we be in church to get a little closer to him? Pray with me. Father God in heaven, I thank you for this opportunity. Lord, I ask you now to empty out this vessel, this broken, cracked vessel. Father God, I place it in your hands, the master potter. Put into it something you would have said, Father God, and maybe somebody. Ear will be inclined and heart will be leaning to receive this word that can feed them for another seven-day journey. We thank you, Lord, for all who are gathered here under the sound of my voice. And we ask you to bless us all. In the name of your son, Jesus the Christ, amen. amen. For a title of a sermon, I would say... We're coming to church for Jesus. And I, I went off and left my, excuse me, I think I left my towel down there. It's not that it's hot. I have uh, neuropathy from coming bad back surgery, so I sweat all the time. I have hot flashes all the time. So women, I understand. <laughs> I'm the one that sleeps with the fan on at home. So, yeah. uh, so I, I do understand. But remember when we were children? For the most part, just about everything in our life was decided for us. We had to do what our parents said. We didn't ask out loud if we knew what was good for us, but we did what our parents said do. Do your chores, go to school, come eat dinner, turn off the TV. Whatever our parents told us to do, we did it. And we grew older, they expected us to start figuring some things out on our own, to think and make good choices and good decisions. They still told us what to do, but they started giving us some independence. They started allowing us to do what we thought we should do. They started to trust us to live our lives behaving like we had been raised with some sense, like we had some good home training, as they say. But we were still doing what we were told to do within that parameter. But did we really understand what we were doing? Some results were obvious. This is you work hard and you gain a manner of success. You treat folks with respect and you get respect in return. You take care of your things and they'll last a little longer. You study hard in school and you should get good grades. So what about church? Most of us were taken to church as a young child and we never really gave it any mind. As we get older, many of us were dragged to church, made to come to church, almost forced to come to church. We knew we should go to church, but we started to question why? There were other things that we wanted to do on Sunday. The game of life was beginning to happen in the ways that we wanted it to happen. We had friends and boyfriends and girlfriends and school functions and football games and soccer games. Life was beginning to become a distraction to wanting to go to church. As we got older, some of us just stopped coming at all. We couldn't find a compelling reason why we should keep coming to church. After all, we missed a couple of Sundays, but we still had food to eat. 
missed a couple of Sundays, we still had some clothes to wear. We may have had some times of trouble and, and problems to come, but they passed and we didn't go to church. So why do we really need to come to church? If we can still live like everybody else and not come to church, what reason do I have to go to church? So what reason do you have? Good question. Thanks for asking. <laughs> I have to tell you that on first glance, you might be hard pressed to find a reason to come to church. After all, what do you really need once you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? You've been saved. The good book says that those who call on the name of Jesus shall be saved. You've already received the ultimate gift of salvation, and if you've already received the ultimate gift, why keep coming back? Should you come to church because of the music and the singing? Should you come to church because you're a deacon or you're on the vestry? Or maybe because you're a ringer of the carillon? Or maybe because you're turned to be the cantor this week? Should you come to church because you're part of the pastor's aid, part of the kitchen ministry or the trustee ministry? Is it a title that makes you come to church each Sunday? Do you come to church because you feel guilty when you don't attend church? You don't really, really know why you feel guilty, but maybe because as a child you were raised to come to church. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is older, he will not depart from it. Or maybe you just want to put a check mark in the box hoping that God will see you in his house down here and allow you in his house up there. <laughs> or do you come to church because the scripture says it's a good to fellowship with your brethren, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Or because iron sharpens iron, Iron sharpens iron as a man sharpens the countenance of his friend because fellowship and testimony serves to strengthen our relationship with Jesus. Or should you come to church because you need to learn the word so you can be effective in your ministries? When you're a willing church worker, you need to be at church to amen and exhort the pastor as he preaches the rightly divided word for you to carry out and bring new people in to the church. When you're a trustee or on the vestry, the church is trusting you to take care of the buildings and the grounds? So should you come to get the word to encourage you in your duties so you can go out and bring in people seeking Jesus? The church is trusting you to ensure future generations of believers have the opportunity to be born again. And missionaries, we know that you come to church to strengthen your heart. We know that you feed the needs of the community and you need your heart re reinvigorated, revived as you go out into the community to bring the word of God to those who are lost, to take the word to the lost. It's important to remember that. We all should come to church because we need the word to lead us as we carry out the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, spreading the word to those who are sick and need to be healed, to those struggling, bound, needing their shackles broken, to those who are, need the word spread to them, those who are lost but want to be found, blind but want to see, tired of living in a world of sin and don't have a friend who can heal all their soul's diseases, a friend who knows all about their struggles. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. But some of us come to church every Sunday just to hear the word. How can they hear without a preacher? But we come with no plans to do anything with the word that we hear. We just want to hear the word so we can put it in our back pockets take it home and throw it in our junk drawer when we get back home with not a thought about spreading the gospel. We come to church because we hope it will make us better just by being here. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Should we come to church and get our talents, our blessings and our gifts, and then go bury them in the dirt? Or should we go forth and spread our talents our blessings the best we can. God has blessed all of us with some gifts. Some of them may be great, some of them may be small, but they're all gifts from God, and what we do with that gift is the measure that God will bless. So do you know why you come to church each Sunday? If it's for the gossip, I'm here to let you know that you'll find plenty of gossip on the road to hell. <laughs> if it's for a position or a title or for self-glory, I can guarantee you that your position won't get you through the gates of heaven if God is not part of your plan. If you come to church for anything besides spiritual fellowship and increased knowledge to help you form a deeper, truer, stronger, and more complete relationship with Jesus, then you might just be in the wrong place. If you didn't come for the relationship with Jesus, you might as well have stayed on your road to hell. 
See, Jesus doesn't miss words. It says, no man come unto the Father except by me. No man can come to the Father except by Jesus. You need to come to church for your relationship with Jesus, to rid yourself of the burdens of sin, to find comfort where the comfortless tread, to find peace where others find no peace, to find rest where the sinners will not be able to cease from their toils. Jesus is the way. You need to know that, and that should be why you come to church Sunday after Sunday. See, Jesus has set a place for us in his Father's house. You should come to church on Sunday so that you know your future address, because this world is not your home. Jesus has made the trials and tribulations of this world just a passing ground, so that you know that Jesus died on the cross, and he was raised from the grave by the glory of his Father, and now he sits on the right hand of the throne waiting for you and me to come home. See, I believe each time one of us steps into church, Jesus places a jewel in the walls of the holy city, the new Jerusalem. Every time we overcome the influence of the outside world, the worldly desires, every time we assemble in Christian love, every time we fall on our knees and pray, every time we try to live more Christ-like, every time we cry out to Jesus for help, every time we humble ourselves and our neighbors, every time we love our neighbors like we love ourselves, every time we bend to help someone who's fallen, Jesus adds another jewel to the wall. And when enough precious jewels have been added, I believe that Jesus will look up on us and say, well done, my good and faithful servants. That's why Jesus gives us peace in troubled times. In the midst of racial discord, sexism, wars, and rumors of war, we find peace. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. No more worried about mental illness and drug addiction. Ye, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, no more fear about road rage and mass shootings. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. No more pains, no more isolation, separation, and depression. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. No more enemies to bother you, to press down on you. No more liars and thieves. No more deceivers and users. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Countless blessings, food to eat, clothes to wear, a place to lay our heads at night. Traveling mercies and a measure of health. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. The promise of eternal life with my eyes fixed on heaven and my soul bound for the promised land. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I pray that you're coming to church for Jesus. We all have a choice. You can choose Jesus or you can choose the world, but you can't have both. You can have the cheap thrills of the world or you can have Jesus and a new life. But if we want Jesus, we have to turn loose the world turn from our wicked ways and give ourselves completely to Jesus. We have to trust him as our Lord and Savior. Don't worry about where you've been or what you've been through. Just come to Jesus just as you are. Amen. He will never turn you away. He loves you. That's why he came from heaven and died on the cross. He died for you and for me. That's why he went away to prepare a place for us so that where he is, we may be also. Jesus wants you to come to him. A new life awaits you, but you'll never know it until you come to Jesus. Amen.